get out before I embarrass you. Can you imagine being talked to in any situation, particularly in public, in a retail establishment? Neither could I. But let me take you back to a story, the reason why we're here, on how I became what I call a hot stress mess. I was not in any danger. So maybe a year and a half ago, I don't have the clicker. So if someone can grab me the clicker, that would be great. So I'll keep talking. About a year and a half ago, I got a new car. I had a friend who shared an office with me at a police department in the administration building, and thank you very much. And he had left law enforcement, became a, worked in the car dealership industry, and worked his way up to be a general manager. So I call him up, I want a deal. I said, hey, uh, I need a new car. Your dealership has the car that I would like. Can I come and, and see you? And so sure, we make an appointment, I go. It was a great experience. I had a fair deal. We were in and out in about two and a half, three hours, and here I'm driving home in a brand new car. Three weeks go by, and now my wife has the itch to buy a new car. Now, if you look at the top of the screen, that's the building where I bought my car in. She wanted, this is a different uh, vehicle manufacturer, she wanted to buy a car there, across the parking lot. So I call up my friend again, and I said, hey, if you didn't figure it out, Julie's my wife. Julie would like a new car, and she wants to go to the dealership across the parking lot. Would you mind, would you be willing to introduce us to the general manager of that car dealership? Because deals are made among people you know, and you get better service, so I thought. So we made an appointment. This was the day before Thanksgiving. I'm always, I show up early. As a matter of fact, when I showed up here, I was one of the first speakers, and they're like, wow, you're here early, you're going last. But I was like, I'm an early person. So we're 10 minutes to 9, we pull into the parking lot, dealership opens at 9, and we walk in. And my friend isn't there. So you know, we wait, and the salespeople call him. He's running late, which is completely forgivable. How many of us run late? If everybody raised their hand. We all run late. It's cool. It's no big deal. So he shows up 925. And now all of his employees need to get into his office to get things like temporary license plates, forms, paperwork, etc. So he greets us about 45 minutes after our appointment is supposed to begin and comes up to us real friendly. Hey, what are you guys doing here? And I said, we had an appointment. And at least in my world, I didn't say this, but this was my thought process. I operate off of a calendar. If you're a student, do you put in when assignments are due in a calendar? Yes, same thing in business, same thing how you know what classes to go to. So that's okay, he doesn't have a calendar, and he walks us across the parking lot, and now he disappears for another 15 minutes. Finally, he introduces us to, introduces us to someone at the new car dealership, and they're chit-chatting, talking about the car. We've waited an hour for a one-minute conversation. My wife, Julie, is the nicest person you would ever meet. Her tone of voice is always perfect, She's a fourth grade teacher in an impoverished area. She is the yin to my yang. I don't always have a great tone of voice. I'm working on it. So she says really nicely, really sweet tone of voice, can we start talking about the car? To which my friend sticks his finger in her face and says, you got to understand something. I'm doing you a favor. And I was in disbelief, shock. And she, she wasn't. She said, are you yelling at me? And he escalated more. This is going to take all day. You don't know how this works. And at that point, Papa Bear came out. And I came out and I said, we will not be doing business here. We are leaving. On the way out of not his car dealership, it was someone else's, this is what he said to me. Get out before I embarrass you. It put me in a little bit of a tailspin. I had rapid heart rate, rapid breathing, cognitive memory issues. The reason I can tell you the story is because when I got home, I wrote it down, and now I can recall it. But I had all of the human stress response responses that we have. And this is the reason why you're here today. Because there's a lot of times where we're placed in a stressful situation that doesn't put us in any danger. Yet we still have that adrenaline dump, that rapid heart rate, and it's involuntary. You can't help it. So in the next 10 minutes or so, if I can give you the tools 
that you would need to overcome what I call the hot stress mess or an amygdala hijack, would that be a win for you? Yes? Okay, I see, I see heads nodding, so that's great. So the amygdala is the part of your brain. It is just above your brain stem. It is the emotional control center of your brain. If you think back to the days of Neanderthal, cavemen, that type of thing, that initiated fight or flight. So when the caveman or cavewoman smelled a predator, they could run, they could flee. Or if they're going after prey and there's an odor, that's the most basic uh, enhancement that you get from an adrenaline drop. Uh, adrenaline drop. So the amygdala, I call it the trunk monkey because it helps you, and that'll become clear in a moment. It is your emotional control center. You cannot control it. It controls you. Just like a child touching a hot stove, they pull away, but the pain doesn't happen until later. They pull away because their amygdala activated. Later on, they realize, wow, this hurts, and they start crying. So this is why I call the amygdala the trunk monkey. You think you're haunting that, huh? What, you don't like the way oh, I drive? Oh, what, oh. come on in and I'll give you a driving I didn't know. You want a piece of me? Why don't you come out and get you some, huh? Where are you going to go now? Well, you can't speed up by anybody now. You think you're better than me? Well, you think, oh, I don't like the way you drive. What, you got a fancy new butt? <laughs> huh? See, out! The Trunk Monkey, a revolutionary idea you'll... So the Trunk Monkey, or the amygdala, protects us. There's five reactions to a stressful incident. We all know fight or flight, that's a common term, and that's used to describe a very short description of the five things that an adrenaline dump will give you. It is fight, flee, freeze, submit, or if you're me, eat. So, when we say fight, we mean react. It's not really fighting. When you're driving along and the ball rolls in the street, we stop, we slow down, we look for the child. That's not really fist fighting. That is reacting to a stimuli. So that is the fight or flight mechanism. Now, when we get this adrenaline dump, we get some limitations. First of all, we get some perceptual limitations and it starts with tunnel vision. So I had tunnel vision during that car dealership ordeal where you can only see in the center and your periphery, you just, you can't see it. It's just like if you were to put a hood over your head, you can see straight in front of you. Next, we have auditory exclusion, where you cannot really hear what's going on after a traumatic incident. And it, it could be life and death, it could be your professor asking you a question and putting you on the spot. And this is what it sounds like. Give him a favorite, call. Favorite. Ask him. Ask him if he would get in there February fifteenth. I'll okay. do that. We'll do oh, that sounds good. That'll give me enough good. time. Yeah, which is good because that's right on track with that project that I'm doing to make sure that all the tenants are knowing about what the parking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. 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 yeah, you had a lot of recycling to do. Yeah. Finally, do you remember the movie The Matrix? Neo's on the roof, and some the agent is shooting at him, and he does the slow motion backstroke, and the scene plays out a little bit in slow motion. That happens to us as well. We perceive things happening in slow motion. Not a lot of people have experienced that unless they were in something like a car accident. I've come up with a methodology to overcome this involuntary hot stress mess. It is called the LEARN method, where L is lungs, E is envision, A is awareness, R is respond instead of react, and N is be nice, say nice words, use a nice tone of voice. And we're going to break this down, and this is going to be participatory, so get ready to move around, but in your seats. I'm not going to make you get up and stretch. Lungs. Breathing. Deep diaphragmatic breathing. It's called a bunch of different things. It's called Buddha breathing. It's called Lamaze. It's called combat breathing. If I were to quote The Rock from WWE, he would say, it doesn't matter what it's called. It's deep diaphragmatic breathing, and I want everyone to do it. We're all going to inhale through our nose, and we're going to hold it. In three, two, one, inhale. Hold it. Purse your lips as if you are going to blow out a candle. And exhale. And at that point, your belly should expand, and then your belly should contract. Breath number two is exactly the same thing, but your shoulders are going to rise. So everybody, three, two, one, inhale with your shoulder rising. Now exhale, pursing your lips like you're blowing out a candle. 
So that is the uh, L, that is the breathing element of the learn method. Next is envision. You want to acknowledge you have anxiety. Just in your mind say, ooh, that was a pang of anxiety. But what makes you happy in life? What's your happy place? Mine happens to be a cruise ship or a beach vacation. And what you want to do is say to yourself, my mind is centered on peace and awareness, and I am grateful for this space. You guys are going to say it. Ready? Go. My mind Thank you. And then we will envision the best possible outcome. Nobody likes getting called into their boss's office, right? Oh my goodness, did I do something wrong? But if you envision, oh, I did something right, I might get a raise, I might get a bonus, I might get recognition, you go in with a different attitude. So that is envision. A is awareness, and it's using your senses. So it's a little bit more than what do I see, name three things I see, name four things I hear. It is Look for a small detail that you previously missed. And I'll give you an example. As you're looking at me, and I'm looking at you, wow, Marcus has wrinkles in his forehead. I mean five head, because it's so big. So that is a small detail. As far as what you hear, you want to listen for faraway sounds, like my voice coming out of the speaker system, and then listen for close-up sounds, like your own breathing, your heart rate, if it's, if it's that still in the room, you can sometimes hear your own heartbeat. I'm going to skip over taste because I'm going to give you guys a hack at the end of this. What do I feel? So what I want everyone to do is take your fingertips, your thumb and your index finger, rub them together with such intention that you can feel the ridges of your fingers. You can feel the calluses, the imperfections, or the perfections. Same thing, you're going to put your hands together like you're praying, rub them together, and this is bringing you back into the moment. Then what do you smell? Do you smell the nice perfume of the person next to you? Or did you wash your hands with scented soap and you're smelling your hands, you're smelling your fingers? Would you guys like a hack? If all else fails and you don't remember anything else and you're stressed, remember to deploy warheads. I'm going to say that one more time. Remember to deploy warheads. Warheads. Now, what is Marcus talking about? I'm not talking about explosives or munitions or anything like that. I'm talking about the sour candy. Warheads. What you're going to do is you're going to pop a warhead in your mouth, and what's going to happen is you're going to get the tactile feel of the piece of candy in your mouth, and that ultra-extreme sour is going to direct your attention back into the moment. That funny face you make is actually a stress reliever. So you want to deploy warheads. And the great thing is, when the warhead is done, it's sweet at the end, and you get a reward for overcoming the hot stress mess. Next, respond, don't react. We all know what the five-second rule is. Your food falls on the ground, you've got five seconds to pick it up. You don't really do that. Mythbusters debunked it. But if you wait five or six seconds, that adrenaline, those hormones that are in your bloodstream, will dissipate and you can respond intelligently instead of reacting emotionally. Finally, use nice words. Please, thank you. I, I feel like I'm teaching a, a kindergarten class. Please, thank you. Would you kindly, would you be able to assist me? Who knows what the four magic words in a relationship are that are supposed to reduce tension? You're right, I'm sorry. Sometimes peace is better than being right. It's not all bad. We have emotion, positive emotional responses. When we're visiting someone who had a baby, when one of our family members had a baby, when we get on a roller coaster, these are all positive experiences. And I'm going to show you what one of those positive experiences is. <laughs> So these babies cracked up. They had an emotional response, and it's positive. Same things happen to you when it's positive. So what we're going to do is go over the learn methodology again. I'm going to say the letter. You guys are going to say the word. L means? Love. Excellent. E means? Vision. A? 
R N. Awesome. So now you guys have the skill set to overcome stress, whether it's in a, a dangerous situation or you're being grilled or you're doing your oral examinations or you're defending a, a thesis or a dissertation. From time to time, everybody is a hot stress mess, including me. I'm a human being. But if all else fails and you remember one thing, remember to deploy warheads. I'm Marcus Melnick. Thank you very much.